push, hit, hook, hand check. No, we're not putting in a Street Fighter combo move to use. We're going to be looking at these actions that are contact principles. And in addition to that, we're pairing the pushing with contacting an opponent with hands or arms. Now, pushing isn't limited just to the upper body, but usually that's what occurs to get a pushing foul. So we paired them and that's what we're gonna look at today. The basic understanding of a pushing is pretty straightforward, a two arm push, but it's not just limited to that. Cause when we look at pushing, it's a legal personal contact with any part of the body where a player forcibly moves or attempts to move an opponent with or without the ball. So that can be off ball scenarios where you're trying to get through or you push them uh, while you're trying to tail them. That could also be pushing to battle for position, whether you're on the perimeter or you're on the block. It can also be pushing battling for post position. A uh, post player can have the ball and you could be pushing with your hands or you could be using your knee. A lot of people like to use their knee because it's easier to move someone but I don't know where they got this as a legal move before. A pushing foul can easily be a rebounding one where you jumped over their back. And the over the back foul call, you actually have to have contact. You can't have just a big person jumping, tipping the ball, and then you have a coach screaming for over the back. Contact has to be made, and usually on those rebounding fouls, you have a pushing foul. Another situation is you attacking the rim, you pass the ball, which means you still have team control, and you crash into a defender. That's a pushing foul because you no longer have the ball in your possession, but you still have team control. So then you just go report a push. So these are all pushing examples that can occur. And the last uncommon one, but typically the higher level referees do, is when you have a hand check going to the rim. When we have a shooting foul, you don't report a hand check. Usually they report a push because now you're shooting and you're pushing the opponent. If it's on the ground, you hit them with the hand check. If they're going into a shooting motion, typically the referee, even though it's a hand check action, uh, they'll switch it to a push when they go report it and they'll verbalize that. Contacting an opponent with hands and or arms. The touching of an opponent with the hands in itself, not necessarily a foul. Now this is confusing to players and coaches because they think any context is a foul. The second statement explains why. The official shall decide whether the player who caused the contact has gained an advantage. And we talked about advantage disadvantage in our very first video, which is the gray area of refing that some people, players, coaches, uh, and referees try to get consistency on to be on the same page. If contact occurs, by a player in any way that restricts the freedom of movement of an opponent, such contact is a foul. So when we talk about freedom of movement, that's the ability to move on the court freely within your cylinder. So if you're off ball and I have a hand on you and I'm just feeling where you're on the court, that way I know when I'm on help side or I'm playing defense, I know roughly where you are and I have your pinpoint. That's not a foul because you're not going anywhere, we're not doing anything, there's no advantage gained. But if you start to cut and I'm holding you or I push you off the line you're cutting because you got to the space prior to me, then now that contact is providing an advantage to the defense and putting the offense at a disadvantage. And that such contact is a foul that needs to be called. The same example goes to the offense. If the offense is dribbling there like Magic Johnson with their back to you and you have an arm bar and you touch or release it or you have it there rested, if they're not doing anything, very possible that the referee won't call foul because nothing's occurring. But if that person starts to make a move downhill or make that angle and attack and you bump them off their line of attack, then you're restricting their freedom of movement. So you are causing a foul. And usually the referees tend to talk about this in a pregame if a player is going downhill or north-south and we have restriction or the defender is bumping them and hand-checking them off their line, we need a foul. But if the defender is going with the offensive player east to west and nothing's really happening, they're just dribbling to set up, then you know what, we might allow that. This can vary, different leagues, different referees, different concepts. But usually in FIBA they try to find consistency on that and they only call a foul if displacements occur. Same in the post. 
If you have the ball and you're just standing there and I have an arm bar on you, we're good. But if you start to make a move and I bump you off your line that you got to first or the spot on the floor you got to first, that's a foul. So if you step up the lane and I bump you off that, it's a foul. Illegal use of the hands or extended arms occurs when the defensive player is in a guarding position and has his hands and arms placed upon and remains in contact with an opponent with or without the ball to impede his progress. It's important you know that it says impedes the progress. So whether you have the ball or not, as we talked about before, if my hand or extended arm is restricting your movement or impeding your progress, whether you have the ball or not, that is a foul. But if I'm not impeding your progress and it's in contact with you, then it doesn't necessarily mean we're calling a foul. Illegal use of the hands can also be on contacts anywhere on the body. We call them hits or some referees call them illegal use. What it looks like is if someone's dribbling or holding the ball and I make contact anywhere on the body, we're gonna have a hit or an illegal use. Just gonna show that the arm's low, we hit across, we strike our arm. If they are in the act of shooting, we're gonna signal high. And the reason for this is because they're now in their act of shooting and we're showing that the contact was during that act of shooting. The final one is a hit to the head, which is a completely different signal. It helps clarify things. You know, there could be contact that occurs. Someone might complain or argue, hey, there was no contact to the arm, but we're signaling head at the table because it's more severe and even minor contact to the head is enough to throw off a dribbler or shooter. So that's what's gonna be reported at the desk. Those are the three different illegal uses you can have that involve hitting the body with the arms. To repeatedly touch or jab an opponent with or without the ball is a foul, as it may lead to rough play. On ball or off ball scenarios, if I keep touching, pushing, hitting your hip, the offensive player might get frustrated that you're annoying them, that you're, you're just being a bother, you're not really playing defense, you're touching and releasing, keeping me at bay, and so a referee can call that just so that way aggression and tempers don't tend to increase where you might have a more uh, severe situation. For example, someone has their arm on this player, player doesn't want it, they're frustrated, they do a hard swipe through to hit it off. Referee goes with a double foul. These are situations that they're talking about that can lead to rough play, is that that constant jab can be an annoyance. Let's look at specific scenarios with or without the ball. Starting with offensive player with the ball. To hook or wrap an arm or an elbow around a defensive player in order to attain an advantage. This is a huge advantage, even the slight little elbow move. It's enough to push the defender in a different direction or restrict them from making a play on the ball. So if I do my spin move and I use my off arm to hold you back, now I just freed up my opportunity to score. Or even without a spin move, I drive down the middle and I hook you with my off arm, I'm getting an advantage to go shoot because you can't make a play on the ball because I'm restricting your movement. So you just call an offensive foul, show the hook signal. A push off, we've seen this in a couple of my videos and a lot of players know about it. It prevents the defensive player from playing or attempting to play the ball and or to create more space for themselves. So I attack, you're with me, I hit you with an arm bar or extended arm, which pushes you back off balance, gives me enough separation to get a clean open look at the rim. That's just crane yourself some space or stopping the defender from playing the ball. In the end of the day, you're just trying to get a clean look and you're gaining a huge advantage being able to push them off balance. Use an extended forearm or hand while dribbling to prevent the opponent from gaining control of the ball. This is still taught, surprisingly, by coaches. Um, they have players doing dribbling drills and they say, hey, put your forearm up to protect the ball. And you have people with an extended arm bar, which is out of their cylinder, used as a guarding uh, tool. So the players are being taught to dribble with one hand and put the other hand up to protect the ball. That is a foul if it prevents the defender from getting in. It's one thing if you have the arm close by you because you're in your cylinder, but once you put up that arm bar, you're extending out of your cylinder. So if the defender tries to make a steal attempt and you slightly turn and maintain that arm bar, 
you're out of your cylinder preventing the defender from making a legal play that is an offensive foul it is a foul by an offensive player without the ball to push off to get free to catch the ball this typically happens when either the defender is very close and while they're completing their cut they didn't get enough space so they use their hands to push off or there's scenarios where the defender is not getting called for a foul for holding so now the offensive player has to two-hand shove the defender to get off them in order to get that opportunity to catch this is what rough play looks like and tends to occur is when we don't get the first foul because then now the offense is adjusting to it and now they're doing things that are illegal prevent the defensive player from playing or attempting to play the ball that's pretty much the same as gain free to catch the ball it could be just an off ball thing where I shove you now I run my routes to go catch the ball you're trying to stop the defensive player from having that opportunity to play the ball or that opportunity to get there to stop you from catching the ball and create more space for themselves these are all three tied together when you push off it gives you an opportunity to catch the ball it prevents the defense from making a play and it allows you to create more space for yourself